welcome to Chaos Considered, where we consider our weird, wacky, wonderful world and share the burden of knowledge. I'm Emily Roberts. I'm Claire Mitteke. And we're doing a podcast. Claire? We're, we're doing you- a podcast together? What? <laughs> what? This Finally. is recorded? This is... I... Ooh. The FBI is watching right now. Always. Always. All things. Constantly. They're welcome. Well, they're probably going to be regretting it once we talk about our topic of the day. Um, but I think first we should really, like, let the people know who we are. Oh, should we go through the horrifying ordeal of being known voluntarily? <laughs> now that you put it that way, um, my name's not Emily Roberts. It's, um, my name is Hulk Hogan. He's still watching me. Sophia uncovered him, and now he's making eye contact with me as we record this. Now, because this is the first podcast, I think you should clarify um, how Hulk Hogan is watching you. (laughs) Yeah, of course. Context is key. Context is key. So, um, I like to go to thrift stores, like any good 20-something-year-old, um, And I did find a framed photo of Hulk Hogan, and I cannot stress this enough, it is someone printed out on a computer paper a photo of Hulk Hogan and framed it and then gave it to a Goodwill. And I saw it and was like, yes, this is something that I need to own. Obviously. (laughs) So I paid way too much money for this framed photo of Hulk Hogan. And the way he's positioned is his eyes are staring directly at me. It's sort of like a, a, a trick photo situation where no matter where I am, Hogan's always watching me. Does he, his eyes follow you just like they follow a me. portrait like, of Mona Lisa? Yeah, and he's like smiling. He's got like a Mona Lisa smile that doesn't go to his eyes. Oh, God. <laughs> the art. The I art, am recording art, this um, at a... It's so powerful kitchen table covered with things that we are donating to goodwill and with a photo that i got from goodwill of hulk hogan staring deeply into me so that's that's really just kind of like that's the balance of the universe you know what i mean that's the energy that we're trying to bring to the table i'm trying to bring some real hulk hogan energy but like a printed circa 2000 something photo of hulk hogan energy I would ask if nothing else from you, really. Yeah. Think about it. Um, I feel like we should talk about how we know each other, why we decided to make this podcast. Um, Let's get into it. My motivations have always really been very upfront and clear. I just want to hurt Claire emotionally and spiritually. I receive that info. I find that challenging. I find that challenging. Um... I like learning new things, but there's a price always. Always. So while I enjoy learning new things from Emily, there is a deep and profound no- cost. Nothing that I know, because my brain is truly like a colander, and all the important things flow out of it like water, and the gross chunks that are left behind are nuggets of knowledge that I can't share with anybody but someone that I have known for nearly 10 years. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that's... Whew, it's been it's eight been years, minute, right? Claire. So we definitely, we met yes. in high school. And I think from the get-go, there was a sharing of deeply yes, upsetting uh, knowledge. Any sort of exposure of yourself as a person as you were in high school is deeply upsetting. Truly upset. Truly. Um, yes, of course. I have mm-hmm. blocked out how I was in high school, and I'm sure you have, but we each we deeply each repressed, kind of yes. hold the key to unlocking that information. Like mutual destruction yes. here. So I can't go too crazy. I outsource my memories to my friends. I really. And only retain the most unhelpful pieces of knowledge. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, um, This podcast is really about telling Claire things that she didn't know she didn't want to know. Thanks. (laughs) Yeah. And then in return, Claire's going to try to do some healing. Um, She's really going to try to 
take the chopped ingredients basket of just trash and garbage that I'm about to give her and turn it into a delicious meal. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna Is pull that what my dad works? normally does. What my dad normally, my my dad's style of cooking, which is like, hey, you know what? We have a bunch of leftovers that are about to go bad. Oh yeah. If I put it all in a pot, what could go wrong? And let's see if we can turn it into something nourishing, nourishing, nourishing. nutritious. So today I want to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart and my brain, um, which is aphantasia. Um, I want to start here so that I can really set up a lot of jokes moving forward. Um, Because let me start with what aphantasia is. I have talked about this with Claire and all my friends. um, And I'm going to be using a lot of personal experience, which in academia is frowned upon. But there are no rules in podcasting. There is no rule in this chaotic hellscape that we are creating. Yeah. And... So I'm going to talk a lot about just my own, and it also really feeds into kind of a, the narcissist inside of me that wants to make a podcast, just first episode, let's talk about me. But, um, aphantasia is the blindness of the mind's eye. So I want, yeah. That's such a wild, (laughs) that's such a wild intro statement. That's such a wild... Yeah, aphantasia is the blindness of the mind's eye. I am mind blind, which means that I cannot visualize things. And I think that really feeds into my own chaos and sort of why I do things to people like you. Because I sort of enjoy the visceral... (laughs) Which is everyone. Yes. I sort of enjoy the visceral reactions people have to information that I don't have because I only get things at the conceptual level. So I do get, I do get my being freaked by things conceptually. Like I don't like the ocean as a concept, but when people describe things, I don't get any sort of visual. Mm. A blessing, some would say. A blessing, a curse, you know, daydreaming is weird. I kind of do it, but I, like, I don't go anywhere. But anyways, I want to sort of play along because I only found out that I had aphantasia about a year and a half ago when I watched a random YouTube video. And so I lived 22 of my years thinking that everybody was mind blind. That mm, yes. no one could visualize. Mm, that yes. things like, oh, imagine this, or I can't unsee that. We're all just like turns of phrase oh, yeah yeah so you were just you were just nodding your head and laughing with the rest of everyone i was like, was like oh no yes. yeah yeah haha ha. i too can see the beach um yeah no i can't i can't do any of that um claire yes. you are not mind blind no so if i say imagine an apple yes you can imagine an apple yes uh now make the apple green okay Make a bite out of it. Chow. Uh, now the bite is turning that weird brownie color. Mm. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Maybe maybe that apple has, like, two human eyes embedded in the flesh. Now, Emily, this is unkind. I trusted you to lead me with your, your but beautiful you can voice do it. And just, into, into safe, warm waters. But you can do it, correct? But uh, yes, I just yes. Now I there's can. there's there's more official tests that you can find online, but we don't care about those. Um, <laughs> throw that out the window. Throw anything official out the window. But I went and I've done a lot of research about it for this podcast, and I've learned some more things. Oh um, God! For example, aphantasia was coined by scientists in 2015. Oh, so, like, super fresh. So, super fresh. It was described in the 1800s. It is vastly understudied. And my sister and I have actually contacted the one person who is studying aphantasia, because my sister is also mind blind. Fun Uh fact. Yeah. Because I was describing it to her, and she's like, oh, that's not how people live. And I'm like, turns out, no. Turns out, surprise, surprise. surprise. Brains are crazy. And um, you could live your whole life. This is where the conceptual thing gets me. You could live your whole life 
thinking that everyone perceives the world that you do in the way that you do. And it turns out everyone else was able to just like imagine whatever they wanted. Reading books must be wild for you. I see. Can I tell you, I've never really thought about it from that side of things yeah. because like reading books for me is such an immer immersive experience. Cause you just feel like you're a hundred percent there. Like everything else falls away. Yeah. And the fact that like you and you also like as someone who is, avid who reader. writes and I an read avid and reader. I write a lot. Yes. Can I that's hilarious say, to me. So there's all there's the other side of the coin called hyperfantasia. So that's people who can imagine things incredibly vividly. Yeah. Like almost that they're there. Um, and I did see this post by this woman who was hyperfantasia, and I'm not gonna like link to it or anything, but she did she was like, I feel like writers almost have to have hyperfantasia to write. And I'm like, no. No. For me, <laughs> Like, not to get into writing or something too much, but, like, when I write or I'm creative, because I love to draw, I love to write, um, I think I care more about, like, the concepts and the feelings that I get through mm -hmm. writing and drawing than I care about the actual images that I evoke. Okay, so, yeah, that makes sense to me. I love my drawing because I draw my characters and things like that. I think it's kind of a way to help me visualize them because as I'm drawing them, I know what they look like. People so, like, with aphantasia can remember things. Um, and one of the articles that described it is like having a computer but no monitor. So like all okay. the information is there. We just don't process it visually. But yeah, so like I know things. Like I know what our mutual friend Maddie looks like and I could describe how Maddie looked when she last visited me in, like, extreme detail, but I just yeah. don't see Maddie. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually uh, really wild. interesting because I can't visualize things, but I have super vivid dreams. See, okay. Yeah. I remember you telling me, like, yeah. things you still do occasionally, but, like, these dreams, dreams where it's, like, for yeah. me, when I dream, like, I can't, like, I don't really see faces. I don't, like, I, like, I get next to nothing. And I really? almost never dream. I dream, like, once a year. <laughs> mm -mm. I have vivid dreams, even when I take naps. I have vivid it's dreams. Weird. It's the only time That's I can so visualize. Weird. So, yeah, I have... The question, though, is... Okay, let me back this up. Do people get aphantasia? I was born with it, but you can get it after trauma. Oh, love that. So the way that it was first sort of coined in 2015 was that a man went into cardiac arrest and then complained to doctors that he no longer had his mind's eye after his heart attack. Wow. Yeah. So there's all sorts of reasons for it. Like, I, for as long as I remember, have not had it. Yeah. But, and it, it is rare, too. Like, only 1% to 2% of the population has it. So, um... Assuming we have 100 people listen to our podcast, which is unlikely and very generous, <laughs> one of those people, one or two of those people probably have aphantasia and they've just found out. Because no one talks about it. No one talks about the fact that you're supposed to be able to visualize things in your head. Like, do you know how hard it is for me to meditate? It's impossible. <laughs> probably, probably pretty, pretty hard. Our religion teacher was always like, imagine that you're walking with Jesus. And I'm like, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> like, we're all just sitting here pretending like we can see Jesus. Like, <laughs> like I don't see Jesus. It's like, teacher, you're taking me somewhere I can't follow. I can't go there. My brain don't do that. My brain don't do that. She don't work that way. I also think it's super cute, though, that it took you so long to, like... It took me... I just, I never considered the fact yeah. that people might actually be able to visualize things. Like, I yeah. literally can't imagine. <laughs> That's one of my favorite jokes, honestly, that was like, I literally can't imagine that. I like, literally can't imagine that. <laughs> That's very good. Listen. That's very good. Like, you can't, I feel like I have a lot of power because no one can control what my brain sees. 
you can't you can't touch me you can't you touch can't me. get at me i'm invincible to your 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 sabotage right and me I'm right really quite vulnerable you're so vulnerable which is why you're the victim of my podcast i mean our podcast <laughs> Mm, that was a fun slip. That was a that fun. Was... That was a fun little little, <laughs> no big deal slip. <laughs> but um, here's something that I read though that really, to Aphantasia. So yeah, you know, there's this whole idea of like how do you cure it, which I don't necessarily as someone with Aphantasia, like I don't feel the need to be cured, um, because I don't yeah. think it's an illness it's just a different way of brains processing but that's besides the point i understand that some people would like to be able to visualize things i'm never going to be an engineer i was never going to be an engineer i don't need to visualize anything (laughs) engineers are the only people who need to visualize things (laughs) yeah that's yeah no i'm so glad you brought that up only engineers only engineers everyone else you really don't need the distractions of images in your mind like you don't need the distraction you're like my I, my head's so clear with all the non-imaginations i have right like all i do is just think to myself in my own voice i just have a, like a 24 7 podcast going where i just talk to myself Ooh, that's how i, I think by the way like i literally for the <laughs> this is gonna sound so ridiculous but for the longest time i was like how do babies think because i was huh. like how can they think because they can't imagine without, pictures, without language. and they don't have language yet. So how do babies think? Like, I literally was like, how do babies... Like, it was a question that bothered me for so long. I was like, how did I think before language? Because I think entirely in language. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, I don't have a backup for my language thinking. No, it's like, if I think something's funny, I literally think, oh, that's funny. Like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like That's the end of that thought. That's the end of that thought. That's the complete unit. Get in, get out. Get in, get out. But um, it turns out maybe I can visualize, and I just don't know it. What? So I'm going to quote an article here. Yet the idea has prompted some researchers to think seriously about whether anfantasics, which is, by the way, the wildest way to make that a noun, but go off, are really missing a mind's eye. Or just not noticing that they have one. Stefania De Vito at the University of East London, UK, and Paolo Bartolomeo at Pierre and Marie Curie University, Paris, suggest that aphantasics do retain the capacity to form mental images. They simply believe they can't. Oh, cute. So, like, they've been doing experiments trying to get people to be able to visualize, and with some people with aphantasia, They were able to develop more of an ability to visualize. So it could be that I have a mind's eye that is just blocked by my own heckin' brain. Okay, wait, okay. So they're saying, but wouldn't it still exist? Like, wouldn't it still be, if they're trying to, like, work with it so that you can, like, visualize better, aren't they still acknowledging that it's a thing? Yeah, so people who can't visualize. What they're saying is, you, like, so I can't visualize things. But okay. I, the reason I can't visualize might not be that I don't have the capacity to. It could be that I just think that I can't. Your brain just, like, nerfed itself. My brain what? just nerfed itself. My brain's like, listen, sis, you got a lot going on. You really don't need anything else. This whole visual in. input is overrated overrated (laughs) okay i like that idea the the brain just said nah no because for some for some people with aphantasia they really didn't have anything like they literally could not like improve yeah but some people with aphantasia were able to improve with their visual so the idea is that i guess that the brain is just okay I'm gonna get upset. <laughs> the the brain is a walking nightmare. Continue. <laughs> I hate I hate brains. I hate the human body. I literally, if someone was like, "Oh, Emily, would you like want to know everything there is to know about the universe?" I no, no, I don't. No. I don't want to know how the brain works. Me, a brain, does not feel the need to know how me, a brain, works. 
Uh, you don't need that brain on brain input. I don't need that brain on brain input. And honestly, I'm happy with my super vivid dreams. Yeah. Um, I can kind of visualize as I'm going to bed. That's a fun thing. That's how I know I'm falling asleep. Um, and also <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Though recently, I've been having this weird thing, because I think I've been thinking about aphantasia a lot. So, like, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, I listen to um, Not Another D&D Podcast, great podcast, and I also watch Dimension 20. And for some reason, every time I hear Emily Axford laugh, I can almost see it. But I can't see it. But it's like so much closer so than close. anything else. I think it's like the 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 auditory input is like messing with something up there where it's like I can almost like like I know like I know I know how her whole like body like moves when she laughs. Yeah. So it's like it's so frustrating because I like I know it. Like I know it. Yeah. And that's one of the things that researchers um think is that like people with aphantasia use like spatial awareness to process information instead of visual. So we use other parts of our senses to sort of process and other parts of our brain to process memories yeah, and information rather than visual. So it's like, if you're like, Oh, Emily, remember your workplace desk. Like I know where my desk is and I could point out where everything is and all my tea stains but I don't see my desk. That's awesome. Yeah. It's crazy. Like wild. Like it's absolutely wild. wild. It's to absolutely think about. wild. It's wild but that I, brains are like that. I just think that the base, like, and this applies to a number, like there's a number of different things that will affect people's perception of events and like life and mm-hmm. whatever. But every time I just think about the base concept of like, hey, you know what? My perception of the world is different from my friend Emily's perception of the world. Like I can look at the same thing or remember in this case, like I will remember the same event. Well, you can remember our friend, a uh, friend of the podcast, Maddie. Yes. In a way that you can't. You can, you remember her in a way that I don't. Yeah. So you can remember her, her queen shirt that she wore when you guys visited me. Yeah. With the long sleeves and it's white and it's, Got the now whole let's not logo. Over, now let's not over. I can. I'm gonna visualize, but you, can you visualize do have it. to. Let's be transparent. My memory's a garbage can. See, I think that we probably remember different features then, and it makes so much more sense. Listen, this might end up getting cut, but I'm gonna tell a deeply embarrassing story, which is what podcasts are for. Yes. We went to high school together. We also went okay. to high school together with Maddie, friend of the podcast. Friend of the pod, yeah. Our second year, I went to homecoming for the first time, and I was dancing with this person, and I could not recognize who this person was. <laughs> and I was like, who yeah. are you? Like, genuinely, I was like, who are you? Like, this is fun, but who are you? I thought she was a freshman. I was like, what's going on? And Maddie looks at me and goes, it's me, your friend of two years, who <laughs> you hang out with. But... <laughs> Well, you have to understand. <laughs> like, on the daily basis, I see this person and we're friends. We're still friends. So what was the difference? Her hair was... Did she straighten her she hair? She straightened or... her hair and she didn't have her glasses on. And that was enough. That was it. That's that all you needed. It. But you have to understand is that in my head, the way I categorize people is like, I can't visualize her face. <laughs> I know it's Maddie because to me, I'm like, oh, Maddie has curly red hair and glasses. And glasses. Yes. I forgot about that. That's... So yes. when Maddie didn't have curly hair and glasses, I was like, my brain was just, I don't know who this is. You're essentially like a prince in like a Disney movie who like the girl puts on a fancy dress and like lets down her hair and he's like, new lady, who this? Right. Who, who this new one? Yes, absolutely. That's me. I'm a, I'm a Disney prince. I literally know people based on, like, five concrete facts about them. Good. And when I see you, I'm like, my brain goes, is this the same five concrete facts? And most of the time, yes. So I know who you are. 
I think it's why sometimes I'll look at people and be like, that person looks like someone else because they share those same five concrete facts. Yeah. You're like, is that person? No, different person. Different person. Into what? What did you bring? So, okay. How are we going to heal? Because I feel like this wasn't an incredibly damaging topic. We're kind of going to slowly ease ourselves. I feel like we're easing into this podcast, right? So it's like how you boil lo- boil frogs. Yeah, tell me about boiling frogs, Emily. <laughs> well, you put them in the lukewarm water first, and then you heat up the pot so that they don't jump out. Right? Is this a yeah? Thing? Sure. You acclimate them to the heat, and then they won't jump out. I'm a mis- I'm a Midwestern lad, but like. I don't know anything about frog boiling. I don't know anything about frog boiling either. I just you, I think it's a thing. You're a pro, are you appropriating frog boiling culture? Because I feel like you are a little bit. So what I have to bring to the table is, I yeah. feel like in the same, va- not, no, really. I <laughs> It's a rather short segment. Okay. And it's just one of those things like, wow, people be doing that. Okay. <laughs> You know how sometimes people, people be, be doing, doing that? that? <laughs> yeah. That's my segment. And I think it's really interesting that we as humans just be doing stuff. So this is my segment of people be doing mm-hmm, that, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know that it's necessarily healing because we don't have anything to really heal from. Yeah, I would agree. This is not an episode. Like, there's going to be episodes where you will need to heal. Where everyone's just going to tr- have to sit down, write an angry email... <laughs> And send it to us. Yes. They'll be troubled. But this is, this is, this is not. Episode one. Easy sailing. Breezy beautiful Episode two. Girl. Chaos. Who's to say? Oh, I know what it is. So it's, it's going to be bad. Oh God. Good Christ. It's, it's going to be upsetting. Yes. It's going to be deeply upsetting. It's about the ocean. So, so and the ocean is upsetting. Oh no, not the ocean. It's Emily. the ocean one. Hey. Emily, say not the ocean. It's the ocean. Okay, well, all right, so the segment that I have to bring uh, to this arena is about wild ice skating. Wild ice skating, as opposed... As opposed to domesticated ice skating? As, 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 as opposed to domesticated <laughs> ice skating. Look at the ice skaters in their natural habitat. Okay, first of all, that's exactly what it is. So don't stop to me. That is exactly <laughs> what? what it is. Is it literally just like, it's ice skating, but outside? It's free range. It's free organic. range? I only eat free locally range sourced, ice skating. locally sourced ice skating. <laughs> Which, first of all, very into. But specifically what I'm talking about with wild ice skating, what? What are you saying? I can't ice skate. I No, neither can I. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Are you god. kidding me? I used to be able to ice skate, but as I've grown, my human body has just deteriorated. Oh, uh, I could never do that. I have one very... But well, you're too tall. Memories. I'm too tall. I have too much to lose if I fall. If I fall... I have Your more head to lose. is gonna explode if you fall. My head is You're gonna so explode tall. because of the like. Consider me less person, more behemoth. Behemoth Claire, Claire Hemoth, Claire Hemoth, Claire Hemoth, Claire Hemoth, Claire Hemoth. I went to like a, a grade school friend's um, uh, birthday party, Ew. and I just have this memory of like all these kids knew how to ice skate, and Claire, who is the size of Claire now, so. Just 20 stories tall. Roughly 20 stories tall. Just uh, attempting attempting to skate and people being like, I'm just let go. And me being like, I'm holding on to this wall. And I swear to God, if you so much as look at me, I will fall and cut myself on the skates and I will die. So every time I think about skating, I think about how much I shouldn't be skating. Anyways. We can both go to a skating rink and watch people skate. Like weirdos? We can watch the domesticated <laughs> like skaters. Aliens just like attempting to understand <laughs> how the human body works. Is that what you're saying to me? <laughs> we should just watch Consider. them like they're like animals in a zoo? Consider. Well, I feel like we could pretend like we're like the ice skater farmers. That we're... <laughs> 
They were growing them for what? <laughs> well, if there's domesticated and wild ice skaters, then someone must be the farmer. Someone must be the we're farmers. <laughs> we're the ice no. skater farmers. We're no, ice Emily. ice skater herders. <laughs> Claire's crying. No. I'm crying. <laughs> no, I don't. See, but you can imagine us I sitting on the sideline in overalls and plaid shirts with pitchforks just be like, ah, the crop is good this year. <laughs> Consider. Oh, God. Consider. <laughs> you, I can't imagine this, so you have to, but consider a bunch of farm animals on ice skates slowly circling an ice rink. I love that very much, actually. <laughs> Like a big old cow, like Bessie's Like a just cow, it's just like chewing cud, very, like, excruciatingly slowly, just so sliding. Slow. And their cow's big, beautiful eyelash is just slowly, like, batting, do 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 yeah. as it goes around. That's precious. That's so precious. That's the whiplash. The whiplash of oh, God. where you took me. <laughs> where we're I farmers. Where we're farming humans. Well, someone has to. That's not true! <laughs> You can just say things. <laughs> uh. Okay, I'm gonna tell you about wild ice skating. So help me. Okay. Wild so ice help skating. me. I just threw my pencil I'm gonna, down. So I'm gonna help. cover my mouth for like the next minute, so you have a full minute to just talk about. It. I just have a full minute just to tell you about this free range ice skating. So specifically with this, with this wild ice skating, it is when people skate. Well, so you can do. I think. What I was looking at with this specific kind of wild ice skating was wild ice skating where they're essentially skating on black ice and like groups of people will like join together to do this. Like it's a whole thing, which is challenging because, hey, humans, hey, humans, you know the black ice be bad. Why are we doing this, folks? Why are we up in here living this dangerous lifestyle for literally no reason? Question. So, can, yes. So are we talking about, like, hey, this, like, is theoretically frozen over? I'm going to skate on it? Or are we talking about, like, oh, I found this, like, patch of ice on the asphalt, and I'm just going to slide on it? Oh, homegirl. It's, no, we got that water underneath. Oh, so it's, like, I could die. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, no, it's, like, it's like hey, humans, this is just a bad idea. I it's love that bad idea. Which I love that I love that for humans because I think the idea that humans were like I know, I, you like, like someone. Like I know is, that like, there's ice where it's like oh for sure this pond is fully frozen and it's thick and white and like fully frozen, really frosty. Like this is some frosty solid ice. And yes. there's also ice where it's like this ice could be like a half inch thin. Who knows? But I'm gonna get on it. Yes. And I think it's crazy that, like, some person in Sweden, because there's, like, this is probably where this originated in. It's one of the places where it's popular. Some Somebody in Sweden was like, I'm going to go and be in the ice. And it's like, didn't Jimmy just die in the ice? It's like, no, I'm going to go be in the ice now. It's like, don't, don't do that. That's well, a bad have, idea. Well, they have universal health care, Claire. That's why they can do that. I can't relate. <laughs> They can afford if they fall into the lake and get hypothermia. They can afford to 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 get it treated. No, the only thin ice I'm skating on is the American health system. So like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, getting political. Getting oh. political. Episode one. So let me continue with what's important. So they will skate on things uh, on like ice that is as thin as like two inches. They don't normally go thinner than that unless it's closer to the side of whatever, like, lake or pond that they're skating on. And the thing about it is that there's actually, they end up doing, like, a decent amount of research going into it. Like, you can't just willy-nilly go about doing this. So, what I was, the National Geographic article that I was reading was essentially a majority of the people that do this are, like, engineers and map map makers and, ma like, I was going to say magicians. <laughs> magicians. <laughs> Ma Ooh. I shall make the ice disappear. Which, if you can do math, I already consider you a magician, so whatever. Truly. Truly. So, Truly. essentially, this is a sport, a sport, 
or this is an activity for a bunch of nerds who have like a death wish a little bit free, free range, range nerds. locally sourced nerds who go out into the wilderness and it's a social event because you never want to go you never want to go alone so it's a social event of a bunch of nerds skating it's a social event and they all skate really close together make no that's not true <laughs> That's just what you want to be the truth. It's not. The other thing that they were talking about is like, okay, how does this work? And I don't know because I'm not a scientist and also I don't care. But I do care. Sorry. <laughs> how does, how does ice, ice work? work? I couldn't tell you. Do you think there's certain kinds of ice that are like inherently stronger than other kinds of ice? Probably. Maybe. Who's to say? Maybe. I couldn't tell you. It, in my heart, all, all ice, ice is cool. same ice. All I say, mice. But it's just it's slow just water. Slow water. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the way that they like part of the thing that they use to calculate, so they use a number of things to calculate. You have to calculate the temperature and the atmosphere's pressure and like a bunch of stuff, and then you'll do like ice testing to see how like sick it is in different areas. And like part of the appeal, I'm sure, is the danger of it. Part of the appeal is the nerd dumbness of it. Um. And then also, apparently, there's these, like, very weird, warbly noises that are created from, like, skating on the ice that thin. And, like, they, um, there was... Here, I'm gonna, let let me pause. I'm going to see if I can find any of that audio, and I will put it... Oh, yeah, you can. Right here. So, it's kind of, like... That's the sound. Unless unless I didn't Unless you find didn't it. find it, but I'm pretty sure you probably sound. found it. It's It's haunting. It's haunting. It's like not enough that I want to die. Not for at all it, like domestic. But it ice. is like that's cool. Um I guess. No, it is cool. It is I am generally I think it's pretty cool. But well, I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't think cool. it was cool. Also, apparently the thinner the ice, the higher the like tone of the ice. And, like, you can kind of, I think, tell, like, when ice is going to crack. When it's getting too thin because it's mm-hmm, too high pitched. Mm-hmm. And apparently ice will. That's, ice okay, that's will, rad. That is rad. That's and rad. And ice will collapse around a high C, which is, like, what the operatic singers do to, like, shatter glass or whatever. Anyways. Right? That's isn't so that, cool. Doesn't that freak your bean a little bit? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> That's it's just awesome. Not just unpleasant. awesome, not unpleasant. Can can knowledge be awesome and not unpleasant? I, some, I I mean I guess so. Maybe who's to say? Occasionally, occasionally. I was telling I was telling you before we started recording that like one of the things I thought was funny was like I was just like looking up like what are like happy fun facts, and I like went to like a number of different websites being like because I want to like add some like positivity or. And each website was like, there are Yeah, no, all the facts that they were like, wow, this is so fascinating and, like, so much fun. It's like, no, actually, this is deeply disturbing if you think about it even a little bit. Why would you tell me this? If you consider anything for too long, I can make it disturbing. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you consider anything for any amount of time, Emily will appear behind you and I, make it upsetting. Emily Roberts will crawl in through an open window and let you know, hey, have you considered it in this Have you context? pondered this element of this? Have you pondered this? So the last thing I'll say about my beautiful free-range nerds is that, like, apparently, like, the way that it works, and like I said, not a nerd, don't know, um, for sure, I mean, that's a bold statement for you. Uh, oh, not a nerd? Like, not a nerd. I think we should remove oh, that. Okay, well, bleep too. that out. Ble- we'll fix that in post. We'll fix that in post. Anyways, so the last thing I'll say about it is that, like, the way that, um, like, it is actually able to hold a person's body weight, like, this two-inch thick ice can hold, like, a human. It's just a bunch of scrawny nerds. Just the thinnest, sickliest nerds. <laughs> The most diseased. <laughs> the most diseased. No, the way that I can do it is that 
because so like the water underneath acts as somewhat of a support and then also the ice on the edges of like the pond or like the water structure that you're skating on um it acts as like a dome or an arch would and like what? holding out the ice integrity I guess yeah the ice at the edges is thicker than the ice in the center yeah yeah. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Heck. Wow, heck, neat. Summer. I just thought that was so interesting. Anyway, so that was my the thing that I find interesting is my what? free range nerds and their dangerous, social, spooky musical moment that they're having. I'm so happy for them. I'm so happy for them. So happy. And honestly, I live in Minnesota now. And there really is nothing else to do in the winter. So, yeah, like, it's a bunch of people who have nothing else to do because it's so cold. Literally nothing else to do. They're like, I'm so cold. I need to feel something. Yes. Yeah, I get it. I yeah. would never do it personally because, again, can't skate. Can't skate. Can't stress that enough. But I would make a nature documentary about these these beautiful, so scrum. I cannot underscore just how paper thin <laughs> <laughs> these nerds are. <laughs> They must be. I feel like uh, we're going to round this whole podcast out with you provide us a very charming, fun, lighthearted thing to consider. And I want to just take it right back to chaos because that's the name oh, of the podcast. Yeah. So I want to do my Emily Roberts original patented Would You Rather. Okay. And... um. Any listeners, we want to invite listeners to let us know their responses and their reasoning. And if it's particularly compelling or upsetting, I will I will read it, of course. And they can send that where, Claire? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. I would say um, our chaos considered email that we'll have a link to below. Yeah, we'll have a link below. I think it's going to be at Gmail. Yeah. You can you can uh, you can send your responses to chaosconsidered at gmail dot com, spelled like the podcast. Spelled like spelled the podcast. Like the podcast. So Claire, this is um, one that I formulated, and that I've used to ruin uh, many a room full of people. Yes. Would you rather have hair for fingernails or fingernails for hair? Okay, what makes this challenging mm-hmm. is twofold. Yeah. Uh, fingernails are gross and disgusting, and I don't know how to maintain them in a proper way. Yeah. I also uh, have been raised by my mother to hate hair. Yeah. Uh, and hair on food. So, like, hair on fingernails sucks. Oh, it's so... finger food is now just the crustiest. Oh, ooh. <gasps> Okay. <laughs> you're um, going to accidentally eat so much of your own finger hair. You would have to. It'd be everywhere. Like, my hair sheds all the time. Oh. Because I know, which is, I, I know, I know. And I'm saying this because I feel like I already, like, have so much hair to deal with in my normal life that waking up in the morning and shaving my nail beds. I guess you could shave. I'm assuming it would be constant maintenance. Like, yes. I'm not assuming this yes. would be an easy yes. lifestyle. Yes. You know? hmm But I think I would have to. What I would raise you is consider grip. <laughs> I don't need hands. <laughs> You're never going to be able to pick anything up again. Well, okay, this is this is the other side of things. Like, okay, I could do the, the hair. Because I, for one, am full team fingernail for hair. Is it like just a uh, okay? Are In you my head, it's a one bunch? fingernail. Okay. <laughs> oh. okay. Oh. Like a real triceratops moment. Okay, because I was imagining so a couple of different things. It could either be like a bunch of small fingernails that like no, you know I'm how when fingernails grow, fingernail. they end up like spiraling yeah. and like yeah, 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 calcifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not calcifying is the wrong word, but you know what I mean. If I had like a couple of like. Almost, if they look like jagged plates coming outside yeah. the sides of my head. That's where I'm at. That's I could aesthetic. like I could full on paint those and have yes, it be like an exactly, avant garde moment. Exactly. Mm. Are you changing your mind? I think I'm changing my mind. Just because the hair is on the fingernails is just so bad. Yeah. 
and would limit my life so badly. There are people. There are there are people. If you're if you're fingernail hair, if you're a hair for fingernails person, please give us your explanation. Please give me reason why. Because I just I love fingernails. Along with your apology. <laughs> sort of like those thumb people from Spy Kids. Oh yeah. I want to be one of those. I just want to be a thumb person. Okay. I just want to be a Listen, thumb. I feel person. like I'm now. I'm fully on board with. You're fully on the thumb person. Side yeah, because as long as it's not so tiny, paint spirally, it. nasty, like impossible to clean. No, because I feel like it would all just break off if it was hair size, anyways. I would agree, but if it was just like a giant, like almost like an alien moment. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Could yeah. Be a space queen. I'd be an awesome space queen. And then you would kind of have like a shelf underneath your hair. In my head, if it starts, if it secrets. starts. Yeah, you could just tuck something back under there. No one would know what's back there. What would I hide back there? I I don't know. Snacks. Snacks? Okay. (laughs) And it'd be easier to clean because it's just so large. Yeah, because I do hate having to clean under fingernails. Yeah, so Claire, why don't you take us out? Oh, heck dang. Well, thanks for going with us on this journey. Adventure. Adventure. This uh, this this pilgrimage through uh, the a couple of wonders of the world. I can't promise that we'll get better, but I will promise. Oh, that the we will, will get, get worse. The stories will get more upsetting. I can promise that. The stories will get. We're yeah. We're just. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I would like to thank my sister Magdalene Nidiki for letting us use her beautiful artwork. Yes, as... thank you. As our little, like, logo and stuff, it looks great. I'm very into it. And um, we will be posting some links to our any social media accounts below. I have to get them set up. I'm assuming they're all be chaos considered. Um, if you want to know more information about anything we talked about during the course of this podcast, you can, of course, I'm working on setting up a website chaosconsider.com will probably be what it is um yeah, that's it will it'll have links because we're all about our sources here we're all about citing sources yes queen because um everything that we talk about is very much a real thing yeah so and we if not, it's we are definitely not experts but we're pretty sure the things that we're talking about are real things on the spectrum of like experts to not experts we are firmly not experts not even a little bit. We are talking about things that are wildly outside our expertise. But But I do have we'll a cite our sources. <laughs> but we'll cite our sources. Also me. I am the source. You also are the source. I'm also the source. Good. So I've never touched a skate before, so I'm not a source. But Emily is a source. I'm a source of something. Of something. Chaos maybe. Chaos maybe. <laughs> <laughs>